hi everyone. Um, I'm Ananya from South Asia Solidarity Group. Um, and I'm really excited to um, welcome you to this event that we've organized um, alongside Survival International um, for the People Summit on a really pressing climate justice issue uh, of our times. Um, and that is the environmental destruction, including coal mining and the widespread dispossession caused by transnational corporations, um, which are working with India's BJP government. Now, India's Prime Minister Narendra Modi has just last week been at COP26 greenwashing the corporate crimes um, that he is responsible for. But today's meeting, we will be focusing on people's resistance um, and particularly on Adivasi um, indigenous communities resistance uh, in the face of intense repression. So we have an amazing lineup of speakers from the front lines of these struggles, but I'm just going to very briefly mention the organizing groups. So South Asia Solidarity Group is a UK based organization building solidarities with people's struggles in South Asia for justice and democracy, including against British corporates such as Vedanta and global coal management. And since Modi came to power, we've been particularly active in supporting the resistance against Hindu supremacist fascism in India. We have organized mass demonstrations of diaspora groups in the UK, including against the Citizenship Amendment Act and the annexation of Kashmir. And our co-organizers for this event are Survival International, which helps indigenous people to defend their lives and lands and determine their own futures. Survival has recent, recently launched a campaign amplifying Adivasi resistance to coal mining and exposing the repression of Adivasi land and rights defenders, including Hidme Markham, an, an Adivasi woman who was incarcerated eight months ago today, in fact. So on behalf of all of us on the organizing team, I'd just like to say a massive thank you to all the People Summit organizers and also to the fantastic translators and interpreters um, who will be providing translation between Hindi, Santali, Kuruk and English. And the event is accessible in all of these languages. So please do make sure that you're listening in the right language just by clicking the little round icon at the bottom of the screen. It says interpretation. Um, we'll be posting these instructions in the chat as well every time that the language changes. Um, there's also a link in the chat for subtitles or you can click the CC button um, at the bottom of the screen. And we will be taking questions at the end of the session, um, which you can post in the chat and we may also answer in the chat if we're running short of time. Um, and we're also very excited to have Ruby Hembrom chairing this meeting. So Ruby is an Adivasi cultural documentarian and practitioner. Uh, she is the founder and director of Adivani um, First Voices, which is an archiving and publishing outfit often by Adivasis. So I'm just gonna hand over to Ruby right now. Thank you. Thank you, Ananya. We're delighted to start off our session immediately with Priya Pillai, who has been working on environmental and social justice issues for almost two decades now. She works closely with grassroots movements and non-governmental organizations that focus on energy, climate justice, and forest rights. She's worked with the Right to Food campaign, Oxfam, ActionAid, and Greenpeace. She has a post-graduation in law and is currently pursuing a PhD on the socio-ecological impacts of large-scale renewable energy projects in India in the absence of a regulatory framework. Welcome Priya and over to you. Uh, thank you so much. Uh, uh, really happy to be part of uh, this important discussion. Uh, very quickly, I just, I'll just screen share and share my presentation with uh, all of you. Uh, can you see my presentation now? Yes, we can. Okay. Yeah. Just to say, uh, I've just made it so participants can screen share, so hopefully that will help. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, I'm not able to increase the size of the presentation. Uh, uh, so basically, quickly, I will be talking very uh, briefly about um, the backdrop and the context. Before we begin, I just wanted to throw some statistics at uh, you. Uh, so in the quarter with uh, beginning April to June, um, in 2020, India's GDP fell by 24%. Uh, again, uh, India was rated uh, basically among the first, the bottom five countries on the environmental performance index this same year. Parallelly, if you see uh, Adani and Ambani, who are large corporations in India, very close to the ruling dispensation to the Modi government, 
they have again come on they both stand number 1 and number 2 on the forbes list basically of richest indians you know and in the same year that is this this year we've seen bjp which is the ruling dispensation in the country receiving 93% of corporate don donations uh, between 2016 and 2018 and this was basically um, reported by the association for democratic reforms in 2020 so these are not just statistics it it clearly spells out the context in which uh, environmental movements um, indigenous communities uh and dalits in this country have been fighting for uh, their rights fighting to save the natural resources of this country fighting climate change through proxy battles um and trying to kind of uh, uh see where they fit into the whole uh, whole uh, scheme of things whether it's regarding the rights that they hold vis-a-vis -vis their land um the their human rights which are grossly being violated uh somebody uh, initially spoke about uh, the shrinking democratic space in the country uh which is which has had a huge impact on you know um on uh, on not only the rights of the communities um the adivasis and the dalits of this country but it has actually uh, led to a very very strong uh, nexus uh, between the government and the corporations uh the, the communal atmosphere that's been created in this country has actually benefited the government and the corporations of this country uh, you know the government to stay in power using the the communal card and the corporations to kind of get land water and forests at throw away uh, you know prices from the government and the impunity to act and to violate rights of uh, communities in this country so uh, when we talk about climate change the whole debate in this country is um, when you go on the ground it is not about uh, you know the whole western concept of uh, you know uh, environment uh, is not and climate change does not apply to india it's basically the debate on the ground is about development versus environment and what matters to people on the ground is livelihoods the displacement they face land alienation air pollution water contamination attacks on their culture and dignity and you will see that if you look at the movements around the country um, whether it's been the niyamgiri movement the mahan movement the posco movement all these movements have sprung up against injustices and and that is core to the climate uh, movement whereas it's it's not really recognized as as battles you know or uh, that that are being fought by communities to save forests things or you know something that is totally kind of and a battle to fight climate change uh this is a very broad map of if you look at this this is india and you see the central indian map uh i'm showing you this because this is this is where uh, most of the um, apart from of course the northeastern part of the country and the western ghats region of the country uh this is mostly where the there has been a huge overlap of indigenous communities this is the mineral belt of the uh, of the country this is also the forested belt so these five states that's jharkhand chatisgarh orissa maharashtra madhya pradesh these are the states where you will find this this overlap of uh, indigenous communities uh, forests uh, this is also where you will find a large number of corporations operating here uh, this is incidentally also one of the you know largest conflicted zones where you will find most of the coal mining conflicts are existent in in this part of uh, the country also uh, the fight here is mostly about you know the the resource uh, the corporations wanting to kind of take control of the resource there's been multiple uh, battles the mahan fight uh, where people fought in singroli district of madhya pradesh to save their forests and their land the niyamgiri fight which everybody knows about again was a battle to save um, uh their forests their uh, dignity uh, their uh, right over common resources um, uh, and all of that again though though none of these fights are really categorized as uh, uh, fights to you know save essential uh, you know forest sinks and in that sense uh, you know um, fights to save uh, the uh, the rights of communities as well as the fight against climate change because uh, they are seen here the, the whole climate justice angle comes in here because uh, climate is seen in a silo uh, where and the climate change battles are seen in a silo uh, 
uh, the fights by communities on the ground to save these essential forest sinks, to save natural resources, to save water, to save forests is not seen as a climate battle. And, and uh, as we look at solutions, as we move you know, and we debate at the COP about uh, net zero, we talk about renewable energy and each country, including India talks about raising their, uh, you know, um, their renewable energy targets, you know, as opposed to fossil fuel uh, thing, um, investment in fossil fuel. What we are doing is basically moving, you know, uh, investment in from one sector that is fossil fuel sector and pushing it into large scale renewables. Uh, and I, I, you know, I'd also like to talk a little bit about, you know, this solution. Is large-scale renewable energy any different from fossil fuel? Uh, having engaged with this issue in the last uh, four or five years very closely, one has seen that uh, the large-scale renewable energy paradigm in this country is no different, actually. I, would, I, I can kind of, with a lot of evidence uh, and a lot of conviction, now say that the large-scale renewable energy paradigm is no different from the fossil fuel paradigm. And it operates very similarly. The players are largely the same. So for example, if you have Adani, uh, you know, if you have people in Jharkhand and um, uh, you know, uh, Orissa fighting Adani and Ambani, uh, you know, uh, fossil fuel mines, you know, coal mines, you all, you again have, uh, you know, Adani coming and trying to set up a, a big um, uh, solar plant in um, Tamil Nadu, where you will find land grab. Uh, this image is from um, uh, basically from Tamil Nadu, where, uh, where again, you know, the, the Indian government keeps talking about, uh, you know, 175 gigawatts of uh, solar, and this is seen as the green solution, the solution to climate change. Uh, but what is happening to the community? What is happening to people's land and resources? Again, you will find that when um, when Adani sets up a solar plant in Tamil Nadu, it in for, you know basically taking away four thousand acres of land, it it engages in land grab in the same way that it would engage in land grab in a fossil fuel sector. So where is the whole aspect of social justice? Uh, same with water. Uh, we've seen this this image if you look at it uh, this, is, this is a clearly an image of uh, every household in, in in kamudi village in tamil nadu where the so, the adani solar plant is located you will find uh, you know a similar uh, kind of a thing with you know where women actually carry water you know they go and buy water and um, um, sorry uh, and priya this, sorry uh, yeah. we have like one minute Perhaps okay. we can take this in the question and answer round. So just, so, just that. Uh, what I'm trying to drive uh, is basically uh, the fact that you know this, this there is there is a there, there, there are a lot of challenges faced, but the most important thing is that you know uh, this whole process of decarbonization, uh, you know, which is increasingly led by the corporations, uh, have to be aligned, you know, with uh, social justice. Uh, we need to think whether you know the larger environmental groups acknowledge support and integrate social justice fights as a fight that is integral to the broader climate agenda also we need to understand that the transition process uh, will actually reorder social hierarchies and it it gives us an opportunity uh, not just for you know uh, emission reduction and building resilience but also to integrate social justice like land, land rights and uh, water rights and forest rights into this whole paradigm and uh, the reality, unfortunately, is that as long as you know mitigation of climate change is profit-driven and it's based on market-driven solutions, the problems associated with fossil fuel uh, will continue to be replicated in 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 renewable as well. And uh, I want to leave you with these this this last image uh, of Kuni Sikaka on the left, and um, um, uh, this this these two images show the strong nexus between government and corporations. The government, the Modi government has been diluting the environmental regulatory framework to allow single window, window clearances and fast track clearances, uh, totally disregarding the Forest Rights Act, the right of the communities. Nowhere is free and prior informed consent of communities taken. None of the processes are followed. Instead, what happens is basically you see that the human faces um, who are fighting for climate change are subject to arbitrary um, and uh, draconian laws where you know the national security act sedition uapa have been indiscriminately used 
um, against people. We know, that even as I speak today, we know that Sudha Bharadwaj, uh, you know, um, uh, is, 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 is in jail. Kuni Sikaka, you see uh, in this image, uh, uh, she was uh, falsely, uh, you know, uh, branded as a Maoist and uh, you know uh, taken away um, 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 by the uh, by the security forces so as uh, we've seen how uh, the, the state and the gov the corporations have been in nexus and have been using the law of the land they've been twisting it and they've been using it with impunity to kind of attack communities indigenous communities and to take away their land and resources thank you thank you so much priya thank you for setting the stage now we turn to a video from Shakuntala, who's a member of the Haste Varanya Banchal Sangharsh Samiti, an organization that has been resisting cold mining in their forests for the past decade. Adiyon se adivasi logon ka ghar hai. Yaha ke adivasi ek dusre ke saath, jungle ke saath, aur aas paas ke vanya jeevon ke saath sad bhavna se rehte aa rahe hain. पर आज कई दिनों से सूरज पक्षियों की राग से अलविदा नहीं बोलता बल्कि ट्रकों के शोर से रसातल में डूब जाता है इन लोगों के जंगल पवित्र स्थानों और उनके जीने के तरीके को नष्ट करने के लिए खनन कंपनियों ने सरकार के साथ हाथ जोड़े हैं सिर्फ इसलिए ताकि निजी कंपनियां मुनाफा बनाती रहें विस्थापन और तबाही एक विकास जो इन्होंने कभी नहीं मांगा था यह उनके उम्मीद संघर्ष और प्रतिरोध की एक कहानी है मानव जितने भी हैं मनुष्यों को मनुष्य हैं मैं उनको यही संदेश देना मैं चाहूँगी कि जो हम लोग जो हंसदों की जंगल की जो लड़ाई लड़ रहे हैं हम लोग और बचाना चाह रहे हैं इसलिए बचाना चाह रहे हैं क्योंकि ये घने क्योंकि ये घने जंगल है तो जीवन है और जंगल नहीं रहेगा तो जीवन भी समाप्त हो जाएगी हम लोग देख रहे हैं कई तरह की मौसम अभी बेमौसम बारिश आ रही है बेमौसम वाला ओला गिर रहा है कभी आंधी आ रही है तूफान आ रही है ये सब जो पर्यावरण जो अपने संतुलन नहीं बना पा रही है क्योंकि जंगल कट रही है और मैं ये कहना चाहूँगी कि यदि जंगल कटती है तो मानव जीवन के ऊपर बहुत ही बुरा प्रभाव पड़ेगा अभी हम देख रहे हैं जो ऊंची ऊंची जंगल है जहाँ जंगल है वहाँ बारिश अपने तरफ जो खींच के जो जंगल लाती है जो ऊंची ऊंची पहाड़ है उस मानसून को और वहाँ समय पे बारिश होती है पर कुछ सालों से हम देख रहे हैं कि ये बारिश की जो समय होती है ये बदलाव हो रही है गर्मी भी बेमौसम पड़ने लगती है अभी जैसे अक्टूबर महीना की शुरुआत में ही बहुत पहले बहुत ठंड लगने लगती थी पर अब ठंड अब तक नहीं लगी है अक्टूबर महीने तक ठंड नहीं लग रही है नहीं तो बिना आग जलाए और बिना कम्बल स्वेटर पहने हम गांव में भी रह नहीं पाते थे ये सब पेड़ काटने के बजाय है तो मैं यही कहना चाहूँगी जंगल जितने हमें मानव जीवन को ज़रूरत है उतना ही जंगल को भी बचाना ज़रूरी है जब जंगल रहेगी तभी संभव है मानव जीवन का इस पृथ्वी पे रहना कहीं पावर प्लान लगा है तो वहाँ से जो पानी प्रदूषित पानी बहती है और वह उस क्षेत्र जो जहाँ भी जा रहा है पावर प्लांट का पानी वो नदी में जो रहती है जीव जंतु जो गर्म पानी जाती है जैसे कोई केमिकल मिला हुआ तो वो जो नदी में जीव जंतु रहती है वो भी 
दुख समाप्त हो जाती है अगर पे हम अपने वातावरण जो प्रदूषित हो रहा है इसके बारे में हमने नहीं सोचा और हम इनके लिए कुछ कदम नहीं उठाए जंगल पहाड़ रोकने के लिए तो मानव जीवन कुछ ही दिनों के बाद समाप्त हो जाएगी क्योंकि खदान के आने से हम जो ग्रामीण क्षेत्र है जंगल है ये सब विनाश हो जाएगा खदान से कुछ भी लाभ नहीं होगा तो हम जंगल ज़मीन को हम उसके लिए देना नहीं चाहते हैं खदान के लिए किसी भी हालत में कहे कि जंगल जंगल से ही ये आदिवासियों की जीवन यापन हो रहा है हर मौसम में कुछ ना कुछ फसल मिलती है अभी जो बरसात का सीजन है इसमें पुटू आ रहा है ये गांव की मशरूम है और कई तरह की जो साग भाजी है ये मिल रहा है ये जो गांव के लोगों को खरीदना नहीं पड़ता है सब्जी का और इस जंगल से नाना प्रकार की जड़ी बूटी है जो हमारे जीवन के लिए बहुत ही आवश्यकता होती है तो इस जंगल को हम बिल्कुल ही देना नहीं चाहते हैं यदि खदान खुलती है तो जंगल में कुछ भी नहीं रहेगा सब उजड़ जाएगा धरती ये माँ है कोई जितने हैं सब तो उसके हम सब क्या है वह है बेटे बेटियाँ हैं तो हम अपने माँ को बर्बाद होते थोड़ी देख देख सकते हैं हम उसके लिए जान भी दे सकते हैं पर हम उसे छीनने नहीं देंगे ना किसी को हम देंगे भी नहीं ना बसाहर ना खदान हम खदान का विरोध करते हैं पहले भी किए थे अब भी करते हैं भविष्य में भी करते हैं हम किसी के जहजात किसी के जमीन किसी भी चीज को हम बिना पूछे नहीं ले जाते हैं अगर ये अधानी बिना ग्राम वासियों की फिर गांव की बिना ग्राम सभा की सहमति का अगर ये जबरदस्ती लेना चाहेगी तो हम उससे लड़ाई करने के लिए तैयार हैं हम जो हमारे पास जो भी है हमारे पास बंदूक नहीं है तो क्या हुआ हमारे पास भी तो हथियार है ये हमारे पास ग्राम सभा है और अगर ग्राम वालों की बिना अनुमति का ये जबरदस्ती करती है हम लड़ने के लिए उससे उस तैयार हैं अंग्रेजों से तो हमारी देश आज़ाद हुई पर गरीबों आदिवासियों के लिए आज़ादी नहीं है क्योंकि आदिवासियों के ज़मीन जब चाहे तब सरकार किसी उद्योग के लिए किसी कोयला खनन के लिए दे दे रही है तो हम आज़ाद नहीं हैं आदिवासी हम इस गुलामी को हम स्वीकार कभी नहीं करते और हम इस गुलामी के लिए हम जैसा भी हो हम अपना तन मन लगा के हम अपन जीवन भी हम निछावर कर देंगे लेकिन हम इस गुलामी फिर से हम नहीं होने देंगे अपना जंगल जमीन हम देने नहीं चाहेंगे अगर जंगल जमीन हम दे देते दे हैं तो हम फिर से गुलामी हो जाएंगे बेघर बर जाएंगे और आदिवासियों का जो अस्तित्व है वो मिट जाएगी हमारी पहचान ही नहीं रहेगी तो हमारे लिए अधिकार कहाँ से रहेगा तो हम बिल्कुल ही देना नहीं चाहते हैं हम पूरी तरह से हम इसका विरोध हैं अगर ये नहीं मानती है तो हम लड़ाई के लिए हम तैयार हैं चाहे हमारी जान चल जाए या हमारे लिए कुछ भी करना पड़े पर हम तैयार हैं पर अपना ज़मीन देने के लिए हम तैयार नहीं हैं मेरी नाम है शकुंतला मैं खेती गांव की हूं We are honored to have Dayamani Barla in our midst. She is an Adivasi journalist and activist from the Indian state of Jharkhand. She is notable for her activism in opposing Arcelor Mittal, a multinational company which wants to invest 8.79 US billion to set up one of the world's biggest steel plants in the area, grabbing Adivasi land, dispossessing the people of 40 Adivasi villages and destroying forests. Dayamani Di also writes for a popular Hindi newspaper Prabhat Khabar which brings attention to the myriad struggles of the Munda people and other Adivasi communities in the Jharkhand region. She has won a numerous uh, number of prestigious awards for journalism and is the national president of Indian Social Action Forum. Johar Dayamani Di, swagat hai ab ab aapki baat rakhein. Uh sabhi sathiyon ko mera johar और क्लाइमेट चेंज पर आज जो हम लोग क्लाइमेट जस्टिस पर चर्चा करने के लिए जो हम लोग कई देशों के साथी एकत्र हुए हैं सभी साथियों को मैं 
धन्यवाद देना चाहती हूँ आयोजकों को विशेष धन्यवाद देना चाहती हूँ जहां तक झारखंड में आदिवासियों के राइट्स का सवाल है आप मैं ये यहाँ से शुरू करना चाहती हूँ कि जल जंगल जमीन और यहाँ का जो नेचुरल रिसोर्सेस है आदिवासी समाज के लिए हेरिटेज है आदिवासी समाज की भाषा और संस्कृति और इतिहास इसी जल जंगल जमीन के साथ जुड़ा हुआ है इसलिए कि जल जंगल जमीन को आबाद करने का खेती लायक जमीन बनाने का और गांव बसाने का आदिवासी समाज का अपना संघर्षपूर्ण इतिहास है अंग्रेजों के खिलाफ में भी आदिवासियों ने लड़ाई लड़ा उसके पहले सांप भालू बिछू से लड़के झारखंड की धरती को आदिवासियों ने आबाद किया और आदिवासी लोग अपने जल जंगल जमीन पर उन उन्होंने खुद ही जमीन साफ किया जंगल साफ किया इसलिए आज जमीन पर उनका अपना ट्रेडिशनल राइट्स है जिसको हम खुटखटी राइट्स बोलते हैं और आदिवासी समाज कभी भी जल जंगल जमीन पर कभी टैक्स नहीं देता था और जब अंग्रेजों ने आया इस इलाके में तो अंग्रेजों के आने के बाद जब टैक्स व्यवस्था यहाँ पर लागू किया गया तो आदिवासी समाज ने इसका घोर विरोध किया और यही 1700 से लेके आपका 1800 दशक तक उन्होंने जो विरोध शुरू किया था वो आदिवासी सिद्धो कानू चांद भैरव बिरसा मुंडा सिंदरा बिंदरा और उसके साथ ही आपका फूलो झानो आदिवासी महिलाएं भी उस संघर्ष में कंधा से कंधा मिला के अंग्रेजों के खिलाफ में लड़े सिर्फ इसलिए लड़े कि हमारे गांव में हमारा राज अबू आतुरे अबू आ राज का जो सपना उनको था उनका था उस सपना को पूरी तरह से बरकरार रखना था लेकिन जिस तरह से देश आजाद हुआ देश आजाद होने के बाद जिस तरह से विकास के नाम पर आज तक हम लोग देखते हैं कि एक तो सिद्धू कानू चांद भैरव और बिरसा मुंडा के संघर्ष के बाद ही आदिवासियों के लिए यहाँ पर सी एन टी एक्ट बना एस पी एक्ट बना और इस सी एन टी एक्ट एस पी एक्ट में कहा गया कि आदिवासियों का जंगल को जमीन को नदी और पहाड़ को और आदिवासी इलाके के जमीन को जबरन कोई भी चाहे तो सरकार हो या तो कोई भी बड़ी कंपनियां हो आदिवासियों के सहमति बिना जमीन मालिकों के सहमति बिना ग्राम सभा के सहमति के बिना कोई भी जमीन जबरन खरीद नहीं सकता है कोई ले नहीं सकता है लेकिन आ, और ये सी एन टी एक्ट और एस पी टी एक्ट ये हमारा जमीन बचाने का सुरक्षा कवच है झारखंड के आदिवासियों के लिए और झारखंड में जो बत्तीस हम लोग आदिवासी जनजातियां हैं सभी बत्तीस समुदाय आदिवासी जो समुदाय हैं सबका भाषा और संस्कृति और सबका जो जीविका है वो पूरी तरह से नेचर पर ही है और नेचर को इसीलिए हम लोग अपना हेरिटेज मानते हैं और नेचर हमारा संपत्ति नहीं संपत्ति का कॉन्सेप्ट है कि वो सेलेबल होता है लेकिन आदिवासी समुदाय में हम लोग हेरिटेज को सेलेबल नहीं मानते हैं और आज भी जल जंगल जमीन पर नदी और पहाड़ पर और जितने भी जल स्रोत है वाटर बॉडीज है इसमें हमारा कम्युनिटी राइट्स है और इस कम्युनिटी राइट्स के आधार पर ही आज भी हमारा समाज पूरी तरह से कलेक्टिव रूप से ही आज भी जीवन जीता है लेकिन जिस तरह से मैंने देश आजाद होने के बाद सोशल डेवलपमेंट के नाम पर झारखंड से आज तक माइनिंग के नाम पर बड़े डैम के नाम पर बड़े कल कारखाने के नाम पर जंगल उजाड़ा गया जमीन उजाड़ा गया एग्रीकल्चर लैंड चला गया और आज की तारीख में जितने भी बड़े डेवलपमेंट प्रोजेक्ट हैं उसमें 21 लाख हेक्टर 21 लाख हेक्टर आपका एग्रीकल्चर लैंड पूरी तरह से डिस्ट्रॉय हो गया है माइनिंग के नाम से डिस्ट्रॉय हो गया है और वाटर बॉडीज भी जितने हैं आपका डिस्ट्रॉय हो गए हैं आज की तारीख में झारखंड में जो हम लोग जल ही जीवन है की बात करते हैं और ये सच बात है कि विदाउट वाटर हम लोग कोई भी 
मैंने जीवन का हम लोग कल्पना नहीं कर सकते हैं ये पूरा वर्ल्ड इसका गवाह है लेकिन झारखंड में जहां पर माइनिंग ज्यादा हो रहा है आपका उत्तर झारखंड में कोयला माइनिंग है उन इलाके में जो जहां पर जिससे नदी को आ, कल तक हम लोग जीवन दायनी नदी मानते थे आज की तारीख में वो तमाम नदियां मृत प्राय हो गई हैं आज वहां पूरी तरह से वहां का पानी प्रदूषित हो गया है वो इलाका प्रदूषित हो गया है अब उस इलाका के का जितना भी जंगल है वो डिस्ट्रॉय हो गया है आज हमारा अपना झारखंड में माइनिंग इलाका को छोड़ के और दूसरे इलाके हैं उस इलाके से भी पूरे झारखंड की बात करेंगे तो आफ्टर इंडिपेंडेंस यहाँ पांच करोड़ से ज्यादा पॉपुलेशन डिस्प्लेस हो गई है और वो जो डिस्प्लेस पॉपुलेशन है आज की तारीख में वो पूरी तरह से मजदूर बन गया है वो रिक्शा पुलर हो गए हैं और वहां की यहाँ की जो डिस्प्लेस पीपुल्स हैं उनका आज की तारीख में कोई उनका अपना पहचान नहीं है उनका भाषा और संस्कृति अपने आप खत्म हो गया है इसलिए कि उनका कलेक्टिवनेस जो लाइफ था वो पूरी तरह खत्म हो गया और उनका जो लाइवलीहुड पूरी तरह से नेचर पर था और वो पूरी तरह से खत्म हो गया तो आज पूरी जितने भी डिस्प्लेस पीपुल्स है वो दिल्ली बॉम्बे हरियाणा जैसे बड़े बड़े जो महानगर हैं वहां पर वो पूरी तरह से माइग्रेट कर जा रहे हैं और बाहर की आबादी डेवलपमेंट के नाम से यहाँ पर जिस तरह से शहरीकरण से भी डेवलपमेंट हो रहा है और यहाँ के लोग उजड़ रहे हैं और गांव उजड़ जा रहा है तो बाहर की जो आबादी आ रही है और बाहर की जो आबादी आ रही है यहाँ की जो आबादी है आदिवासी आबादी उसको भी डिस्प्लेस कर रही है और आज की तारीख में 2011 के सेंसस के आधार पर जहां पर झारखंड में आदिवासियों की जो जनसंख्या थी कभी यहां पर हम 60 प्रतिशत हुआ करते थे आज की तारीख में ओनली हम लोग ट्वेंटी है हर 10 साल का जो जनगणना होता है उसमें 1 परसेंट टू परसेंट आदिवासी यहाँ पर पॉपुलेशन डिक्रीज कर जा रहा है और ये हम लोग सारे लोग जानते हैं कि जो पॉपुलेशन पर ही भारत का जितना भी चाहे तो हम कहेंगे इस लोकतंत्र में राजनीतिक व्यवस्था एजुकेशन का सिस्टम हेल्थ सिस्टम या तो जितने भी डेवलपमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट जिसमें की हिस्सेदारी की बात होती है डेवलपमेंटल प्रोजेक्ट में आदिवासियों को आरक्षण की बात होती है ये तमाम चीज इसी पर निर्भर करता है लेकिन आज की तारीख में जिस तरह से यहाँ के ट्राइबलों के यहाँ से जमीन लुटा जा रहा है जमीन जंगल लुटा जा रहा है तो इस तरह से माइनोरिटी हो रहे हैं तो मैं ये कहना चाहती हूँ की आज हाँ, माफ कीजिएगा एक मिनट बाकी है हाँ, समय, हाँ, आ, आज, आ, आज 2014 के बाद यहाँ का सी एन एक्ट पूरी तरह से वायलेट हो रहा है और आज की ता, तारीख में जो हमारा यहाँ पांचवी अनुसूचित था उसका भी वायलेशन हो रहा है ग्राम सभा के अधिकार का वायलेशन हो रहा है और जब हम अपने हक की बात कर रहे हैं अपना लैंड वाटर फॉरेस्ट के रक्षा की बात कर रहे हैं ये मोदी सरकार 2014 के बाद आई है वो हमें लगातार हमारे ऊपर में जो आवाज उठाने वालों को देशद्रोह के नाम पर राष्ट्र विरोधी के नाम पर हम लोगों के ऊपर में फॉल्स केसेस डाल के जेलों में बंद कर रहा है आज यहाँ पर आदिवासी समाज के साथ और माइनॉरिटी समाज के तमाम जो संस्था है उनको बंद करने का काम कर रहा है और आज की तारीख में मैं अभी नया जो रिसेंट आया है हमारा जो जमीन गैर मजरूआ आम और खास जमीन था जो पांचवी अनुसूची के क्षेत्र में जो हमारा कलेक्टिव और यहाँ पर समाज का सामुदायिक संपत्ति था उसको लैंड बैंक बना के अड्डानी अंबानी को और तमाम जो बड़े बड़े कारपोरेट को ऑनलाइन ट्रांसफर कर रहा है आज की तारीख में स्वामित्व कार्ड के नाम पर जमीन का सर्वे करके पूरे गाँव का एक एक इन जमीन को बड़े बड़े कारपोरेट को हस्तांतरण करने की पूरी व्यवस्था कर रही है हम लोग इसके खिलाफ में लड़ रहे हैं मैं कहना चाहती हूँ कि आप लोगों से भी पूरे देश के साथियों से मैं अपील करना चाहती हूँ कि आज की तारीख में हम क्लाइमेट जस्टिस की बात करते हैं तो आदिवासियों के जल जंगल जमीन के जो संघर्ष है उस संघर्ष के साथ में कदम से कदम मिला पूरे देश को यूनाइट होना पड़ेगा और हम लोग जहाँ लड़ रहे हैं 
बड़े कंपनियों के खिलाफ ने केंद्र सरकार की तमाम गलत नीतियों के खिलाफ ने आप लोगों को भी हम लोगों के साथ खड़ा होना पड़ेगा तो मुझे लगता है कि हम लोग सही मायने में इस पूरे भारत के साथ पूरे विश्व में क्लाइमेट जस्टिस के नाम पर हम लोग एक नया अलग हमारा एक ताकत को बना सकते हैं तभी हम क्लाइमेट जस्टिस की बात कर सकते हैं तब सभी साथियों को हमारा जोहार Johar, bahut, bahut uh, we now have Philip Kujur with us. We have a pre recorded video from him, even though he is with us live, and he will be able to speak some more during the question and answer round. Philip Kujur is an Adivasi activist who has been working for social and environmental justice with mining affected communities for the last 25 years. Philip has especially focused on coal and bauxite mining issues in Jharkhand, India. to protect community rights over natural resources and to protect adivasi communities distinct culture identity and livelihood mera naam philip kujur hai aur main adivasi hu ye jo aap dekh rahe hain piche mere piche mein pura magad magad project chal raha hai coal mines ka aur baju mein idhar pura khet hai ये पूरा हरा भरा जगह था यहाँ के लोग जो यहाँ के लोग जो हैं खेती पर निर्भर था उनकी अपनी परंपरा अपना संस्कृति था एक साथ बैठते उठते थे आज 2016 के बाद यहाँ का पूरा पूरा जोग्राफी चेंज हो गया ये बड़े खदान आ कर के यहाँ के लोगों को डिस्प्लेस कर रहे हैं और कभी पोल्यूशन नहीं देखा था यहाँ के लोग को पॉल्यूशन मिल रहा है सरकार का ये कहना है कि एक एशिया का सबसे बड़ा प्रोजेक्ट है और मैं जहाँ बैठा हूँ ये मगध प्रोजेक्ट है और मगध प्रोजेक्ट से हजारों लोग का ज़मीन जो ज़मीन ले कर के यहाँ जो नेशनल डेवलपमेंट के नाम पे हम तो हम हमारे आदिवासी लोग 300 साल से लड़ रहे हैं इसे विकास विकास के विकास के यही मॉडल के खिलाफ कि आप जो स्टैब्लिश है जो सभ्यता है संस्कृति है उनका जो आपस का सामंजस्य है जो समाज चलता है जीवन जीने का तरीका है उसको ख़त्म करो सिर्फ और सिर्फ नेशनल इंटरेस्ट के नाम मूल्य चुका रहा है एक पूरा समाज का जो ताना बना था उसका सिस्टम था प्रकृति के साथ उनका रिश्ता उनका कल्चर एक जगह में उनका देवस्थल है मतलब सरना है उनका कब्रस्थान है तो सारे चीज़ को जो उनका डिग्निटी है उनका सम्मान का बात है उसको सारे चीज़ को ख़त्म करके ये खदान ये सारे चीज़ एक खदान के लिए सेक्रीफाइस कर रहे हैं ये सारा चीज़ जो तोड़ करके ये कॉलोनी बनाने का जो धंधा है यहाँ बाहर से लोग आकर के अपना कॉलोनी बनाएंगे यहाँ का कल्चर को उनके द्वारा डोमिनेट किया जाएगा तो ये जो बहुत बड़ा संकट है ये देश का डेवलपमेंट के लिए बहुत खतरा है इसको हम डेवलपमेंट नहीं बोल सकते हैं डेवलपमेंट के नाम से ये पूरा ये एक तो प्रकृति का बर्बादी है यहाँ का जो आदिवासी लोग हैं उनका जिंदगी का जीवन जीने का जो तरीका है जो प्रकृति के साथ जीते हैं प्रकृति जिनको जिनको माई बाप है प्रकृति जंगल से ज़मीन से जो उनको मिलता है उनका जो जिंदगी चलता है उसको सारे चीज़ को ख़त्म करके ये खदान के द्वारा लोगों को सुविधा लोगों का पेट भरना मतलब लोगों का पॉकेट भरना बड़े बड़े अफसर बड़े बड़े मंत्री बड़े बड़े लोग का ये जो न्याय अन्यायिक अन्या, मतलब एक तरीके से ये विकास का जो हिस्सेदारी है वो समान विकास का बात नहीं है और ये जो ये जो सवाल हम जो खड़ा कर रहे हैं ये महत्वपूर्ण है जो पूरा जो आदिवासी क्षेत्र है ख़त्म हो रहा है आदिवासी लोग का जिंदगी जहाँ जल जंगल जमीन से चलता था वो सब सारे चीज़ ख़त्म होने वाले हैं अब आदिवासी लोग को कहाँ सिप करके कहाँ बसाओगे इसका मतलब है कि आदिवासी एक ओवर बर्डन जैसे ओवर बर्डन आप देख रहे हैं ओवर बर्डन की तरह आदिवासी कम्युनिटी है इनको ख़त्म करो इसको बर्बाद करो इनका ज़िंदगी ख़राब करो ये खुद मर जाएंगे और ये ओवर बर्डन की तरह इसको डंप करके छोड़ दो अभी जो देश का सरकार है विकास के नाम पर अलग अलग कंपनियों से और अलग अलग कंपनियों को विशेषकर अडानी और अम्बानी के पॉलिसी पर काम कर रहा है देश का पार्लियामेंट काम नहीं कर रहा है और ये जो योजनाएं चलाई जा रही है 35 किलो अनाज दे दो एक इन 
पीएम आवास दे दो और एक मोदी मोदी खाना दे दो मतलब उसको लेटरिंग घर बोलते हैं खाओ पियो खाओ सो और हगो लेटरिन करने जाओ ये जानवर का काम होता है और उसका इस्तेमाल दिमाग का इस्तेमाल नहीं करना है यहाँ के आदिवासियों को एक मानसिक गुलामी की तरफ ये मोदी सरकार की योजना है पॉलिसी जो लेके जा रही है इसका मतलब ये है कि आप जो संपत्ति जो संसाधन आदिवासी क्षेत्र में है चाहे तो देश का देश का ये सिर्फ चतरा का बात नहीं है देश के अंदर जहाँ भी आदिवासी आदिवासी क्षेत्र है वहाँ मिनरल्स हैं वहाँ आदिवासी लोग को कि मानसिक गुलामी मानसिक गुलाम बनाओ प्रकृति को बचा के रह सकते हैं प्रकृति को बचाने का मतलब दुनिया के सारे जीव जंतु से लेकर के सारी सभ्यता को बचाने की बात करते हैं उसका कोई वैल्यू नहीं और ये चाहते हैं कि आदिवासी लोग मर जाए मानसिक गुलामी के साथ साथ वो इतना पियंकड़ हो जाए दारू पिए और मर जाए खत्म कर दे इसीलिए जो ओवर बर्डर देख रहे हैं आप ये आदिवासी लोग ओवर बर्डर के रूप में दिखते हैं मोदी को दुनिया को अगर जिंदगी दे सकता है तो एक आदिवासी दर्शन इसको आदिवासी विचार हम बोलते हैं आदिवासी विचार ही दुनिया को बचा सकता है एक ही रास्ता है आप एक ही रास्ता अभी देखो आदिवासी लोग का जिंदगी उसी रास्ता से आप अपना जिंदगी बचा सकते हो नहीं तो आप जाओगे ऑक्सीजन के लिए वो ऑक्सीजन बूथ में जाना पड़ेगा जो प्रकृति है पेड़ पौधा है जो आदिवासी लोग का जिंदगी का एक हिस्सा है उसको खत्म कर रहे हो एक खदान से फैक्ट्री से और बड़े बड़े पावर प्लांट लगा करके ये सब चीज़ आपका जिंदगी को ख़त्म कर देगा और सीधा सा बात है आप सुधरो हम तो जाने वाले हैं आप सुधरो नहीं तो आपको प्रकृति सुधार देगा We are really delighted to have Disha Ravi with us next, a 23-year-old climate environmental activist with Fridays for Future India. She became an activist after she saw her family impacted by the water crisis. She is best known for advocating for better policies and governance for the climate and environmental sector. She is passionate about ensuring the voices from MAPA, most affected people and areas, we are represented in climate conversations and negotiations. Welcome, Disha. Over to you. Thank you so much, Ruby. And I, firstly, I just wanted to say it's such a huge honor to be speaking here among so many people I consider my idols. Uh, so, um, thank you so much for having me. And I think a, a lot of if uh, uh, everything that's been spoken has already been covered, and uh, so I don't know what else I would I can't even cover, but. Uh, since you know we are uh, talking about cop 26 i wanted to talk about how i'm already disappointed uh, with what they with what india has promised because i know that these climate negotiations mean that world leaders will get to negotiate with our lives and it's often those of us in india and especially adivasi communities and dalit communities and bahujan communities that will be pushed under the bus um in a recent interview the minister of environment bupendra yadav actually said that his message at cop 20 cop 26 is slogan se zyada we want action but when in his life did he have to raise slogans um i have never seen him raise slogans for anything because he is not someone who isn't in a position of power he's in he's in the position to make decisions that will impact all our lives and this isn't limited um to cop 26 he had that power before cop 26 i mean he will continue having that power after cop 26 and this is nothing but an attempt uh from these so called leaders to steal our language and greenwash us into thinking that he didn't have power because he clearly doesn't understand what it means to be an environmental minister because everything the ministry of environment has done in the past few years has been dilute norms like the eia the forest conservation act and recently the uh, coastal regulation zone so in this is a, this is going to impact uh, people who are already vulnerable to the climate crisis first and i don't think 
they aren't doing anything i think they're doing a lot and what they're doing is actively making sure that the climate crisis is um getting worse and he's talking about raising slogans when and wanting action but he's had the power to take action he's had the power to not cause harm he's had the power to do good but he instead he's done everything opposite um i don't think he understand what it means to equitably distribute resources and these may seem like big words right equitable um for him especially for someone who's never had to struggle for anything in his life um and it we ask for equitable climate justice or equitable environmental just, justice because we identify that different sections of the society are entitled to different kinds of resources and in different quantities but we also understand the role of each person and the role they play in our community and it's understanding that farmers may need more land because they're the ones growing crops and it's understanding that adivasis are the true owners of forests because they are indigenous to that land and it's understanding that women and other marginalized communities should be given priority while recognizing that they are as important as men and it is sharing our common resources such as water forests and produce it creates without poisoning it and this is the opposite of what india has been doing we have been opening up coal mines we have been auctioning them off and all of this is coming at the cost of people who are in these um regions and any time someone raises their voice against these um issues they are punished for it and land has been looted away from indigenous people and i think like so many people who spoke about it already covered that so um this isn't this is a historical um injustice that people have had to face the only issue that has changed is um the oppressor has changed from being white people to the brahmins and uh the upper caste people who are in the ruling party at the moment and we've you know broken away so many of our forests we've mixed venom with our waters we've broken rocks to coal mine we've slashed trees without the blink of an eye and we've quite literally broken mountains itself and world leaders and corporations like adani are still not satisfied what's worse is that those demanding that our homes our waters and our commons be left alone are being punished for it um we have been jailed we've been beaten we've been starved and laid siege to and these are the people who are the true owners of the land but we refuse to do nothing about it we don't have the privilege to stop doing what we are doing our existence is political and so is our, so is the fight for our home and despite the very very gory situation in india my hope comes from the people the people who dare reimagine a world beyond the binaries a world where all sentient beings are chosen over all else and i don't expect change to come from world leaders who lie about freedom of speech at the g7 while arresting anyone who has a different perspective in their homeland I don't put my hopes in the hands of colonizers who choose war without a second thought. I choose to put my faith in my people who have continued to rise at every single injustice and there are many of those and there are many of those people in this call itself and it's such an honor for me personally to be sharing stage with them. Um a change has already started. Change has come from these people with our farmers who continue to strike at the capital with um with our adivasis who continue their resistance despite everything they've had to face and with our students who have been continuing their fight despite wrongful incarceration for what they've done and the main challenge i think that we face for a better world an equitable world is the lack of political will to make it happen the current regime and any regime that has come before us uh has profited too way too much from the suffering of people so they don't want it to change they want the situation to get worse with every tree they cut the gdp increases a little bit 
and their pockets um you know grow bigger and people have had to bear the cost of them lining their pockets but what they need to know that is people are not going to stay silent and we are going to ensure that climate action is taken and the excessive need for silencing any ideas that is different from theirs will not hold us back and what they don't realize is that they can they can put people behind bars but they can't lock ideas up and ideas can never be held back by bricks and iron because ideas are in one person and our love and our hope and our ideas and our resistance for a better planet for a planet that is shared by so many others that will never die because our love is the one that crosses oceans the one that breaks prisons and the the kind that saves a planet thank you thank you so much disha we are honored to have soni suri here speak to us next she's an adivasi land rights women's rights and prisoners rights activist from bastar chatisgarh she was arrested on false charges in 2011 and subjected to horrific violence in custody and continues to be harassed by the police she has fought tirelessly for other imprisoned women including land rights defender hidne markam who was arrested in march 2021 and is still in custody soni ji aap apni baat rakhiye सब साथियों को जो जितने भी हम बात रखने के सोचेंगे हम ऑलरेडी दयामणि दीदी ने बहुत कुछ चीजों को रखा है और जो हम रखना चाहते वही बात है पूरी हमारी दिल की बात है आप लोग तक कहा है लेकिन बस्तर की एक अलग ही एक चीजें हैं या जो होती है अब इडमे मरकाम के बारे में तो सभी लोगों को पता है आप सबको पता है की इडमे कौन है इडमे किसके लिए लड़ती थी और वो किस बात की आवाज उठाई थी आज उसको जेल के उस जगह पे जेल के सलाखों में डाल दिया गया इनमें पर्यावरण को लेके लड़ाई करती थी नंदराज पहाड़ जो नंदराज पहाड़ के लिए उन्होंने कम से कम सात आठ दिन तक का एक आंदोलन चला जिसका लीडरशिप इन्होंने मरकाम ने किया और उसमें हम सब थे सब लोगों ने मिलके कम से कम तीस हजार के आसपास पर भी पूरी हमारी आदिवासी जनता के साथ लड़ाई किया गया है कि ताकि नंदराज पहाड़ को जो पहाड़ है उसमें मैनेज अडाली करना चाहते थे और वो भी बिना ग्राम सभा का फर्जी वाला ग्राम सभा करके तो उसके लिए हम निर्णय मतलब ने बहुत बेहतरीन फाइटर बनकर हम सब लेके लड़े लेकिन आज हमारी इनमें भाई को सलाखों के उसमें डाल रहा है हम हम उस पहाड़ जो पहाड़ है वो ऐसे जगह में बहुत ऊंचाई पे पहाड़ है जब मानसून चलता है तो उस मानसून से एक टकराव होती है उससे पानी का पानी बरसता है और वो पानी जब बरसता है लाखों और लोगों को एक जीवन का ध्यान देता है और वो एक स्रोत है इस पहाड़ में पानी निकलने का स्रोत है वो कहीं खत्म ना हो जाए उस खत्म होने से कई जाले हमारे नदियां सूख जाएंगी हमारे जल जंगल जमीन सूख जाएंगी इस तरह से इनमें मरखाम में उस तरह से लड़ने वाली एक हमारी इनमें बहन इनमें शांति है उसके साथ साथ कई लोग उस पहाड़ के लिए नक्सा के नाम से मार दिया गया गुड्डी फुर्दिया लट्ठू ऐसे अनगिनित हमारे आदिवासी साथियों को उन्होंने बस इस बात को कहा कि नहीं हमारे जंगलों को मत काटो हमारे पेड़ों को मत काटो हमारे पहाड़ों को मत खोदो इस बात की लड़ाई के एक्सक्यूज मी वी हैव एन इश्यू विद द इंग्लिश ट्रांसलेशन एम आर यू एबल टू स्पीक मोर स्लोली प्लीज एम एंड वी जस्ट गिव इट वन सेकंड एंड या सेट अप धीरे बोलो मतलब हां हां तो इस तरह से चीजों के लिए लड़ाई करते हैं आज यहां बस दिस इज द रीजन व्हाई वी आर फाइटिंग एंड प्रोटेस्टिंग अबाउट दैट why are they putting poor people into the jails and prisons for the only reason so that they can mine and use these big big companies we are saying we are raising our voices please let us protect our mountains our hills and our rivers
There are many, many atrocities that are being committed. Somebody's nose has been cut off or their ears have been cut off, and this is the kind of violence we are experiencing. So many people that are being put into prisons. These are the type of things that are happening. We are Adivasis and we are joining in unison against big companies. There's been a lot of police forces that have been put against us. We are Adivasis. We unite and fight against these injustices. These are our rights, our way of life. Cars without number plates are being recognized or held up to suspicion. I've been in a prison cell, I've been in Hungary, I've fought against these injustices. I've not been afraid of going to prison. To fight for our land, our waters, our hills and mountains. We must protect our resources, our land, our way of life. Is it wrong to protect our lands and our waters and our way of life? Why are these, we are getting more and more diseases and illnesses and this can be caused by the pollution and damage that the mining companies cause. But if we live in the jungle, we get clear air, clean air. We've had lived with the land healthily for so long. Why are we being put into prison? Why are we being targeted? Why are we being shot at? Is that a, a negative point in us that this is being done? When, When people are taken from their homes and killed, murdered for three lakh, four lakhs. In order to get our water, land, property into our own hands. We need to protect our jungles, our lands, our forests. Who will protect us? If a mother gives birth to a child 
and then ask, are you the mother of this child? This is what is said. We are Adivasis. We will give our lives for our land, jungles and property. People continue to mess around with nature, destroying forests, digging mines, and releasing pollution. Oh. Apologies, we're just losing um, internet connection here and uh, really get back in. To hire Soniji. Uh, apologies for the internet connectivity. We now move on to our last speaker, Keval Bharadia. Keval is a member of the South Asia Solidarity Group, an anti imperialist, anti racist organization based in the UK. He is an activist and political economist. He has worked in the finance sector for 15 years and is now a radical consultant advising on structural anti-racist and anti-capitalist policies for peace and justice. His recent work includes the development of transformative reparations policies for slavery, colonialism and continued imperialism. Welcome Keval, the time is yours. Um, thank you to everyone attending today and uh, all the technical staff and interpreters. Um, and thank you to our strong and inspiring speakers. It is an honor to share this panel with people who have fought against the full power of India's authoritarian fascist military state, a state that does so much to kill its people for corporate profits. I welcome you warmly and thank you from the deepest part of my heart for fighting and resisting in all our names. In the short time I have here today, I only want to make a few points that speak to my own experiences. My life as a senior manager working at the London Stock Exchange for 15 years, seeing the full scale and might of global capitalism and the violence it is capable of unleashing into every corner of the planet with impunity. And my life over the last 10 years, since leaving the financial industry and trying to be part of the resistance to the most violent ideology of our time, capitalism and the imperialism it takes to enforce it. Narendra Modi should be known as the butcher of Gujarat and was even barred from coming into the UK for human rights abuses whilst he was chief minister there. As his power rose and with BJP propaganda, Prime Minister Modi is hailed as the development man, bringing electrification and sanitation to villages and cleaning up dirty money and corruption. Hundreds of news channels and thousands of WhatsApp messages and hundreds of thousands of social media posts push these lies into every home in India each day. Sadly, most NGOs and charities are complicit in making the situation worse. Many of them believe that international development 
can somehow liberate people under a regulatable capitalism. NGOs and charities who are not explicitly anti-capitalist are doing a disservice to the people they claim to be supporting and allowing at a fundamental level, capitalist propaganda, exploitation and atrocities to grow and grassroots revolutionary resistance to become weaker. So we are extremely grateful to Survival International for helping to bring this event together and joining the fight to dismantle the hegemonic political and economic system that is at the root cause of people's suffering. It is the logic of capitalism that drives governments to allow for the state murder and rape of people defending their land. Neoliberal governments who leverage and amplify religious and racial hatred and division, who allow for new fossil fuel mining and burning in the global south when Europe banned it. That is racial capitalism in action, reminding us that there is no ethical production or consumption under capitalism when understood historically and globally. Banks anywhere in the world are allowed to funnel money into any mining project using an unlimited and sophisticated array of financial structures and technical instruments. The money supply is endless because the system allows for the creation of money at the press of a button. Once it passes through a mining project, trillions of dollars flow into state sanctioned tax havens to avoid hyperinflation. Who uses tax havens? Shareholders that include corporate owners like Adani and politicians like Minister of State for Civil Aviation, Jayant Sinha. What it means is this, the same cartel of people own the banks and the money printing machines, control public discourse, write the laws and determine what's legal or not, and have a military industrial complex to make sure the pursuit of profit goes without interruption. As pointed out by previous speakers, the atrocities being carried out on Adivasi people is an ongoing genocide. A genocide that began when the Dutch and British East India companies arrived and began carving up land for capitalist production. Organizing foods to be grown and goods to be manufactured, not for human needs, but for the wants of profit. All wealth is derived from the blood of slavery and colonialism, which Barclays Bank and Standard Chartered, two of the biggest banks in London, know very well. They are amongst the leading financiers of Adani. Collectively, international banks have provided $12 billion in loans and other forms of financing to Adani. Whilst most of Adani's financing comes from private banks in India, the UK is second demonstrating the key role the UK still plays in imperialism, plunder and profits. It demonstrates that UK financial capital and wealth, including UK pension money, is linked to Adani and so is complicit in the atrocities you have heard here today. International banks have not turned down the chance of fossil fuel profit in India and no that the BJP has turned it into an authoritarian Hindutva corporate state where Muslims are lynched by Hindutva groups and are targeted in laws with, which disenfranchise them and are a prelude to ethnic cleansing. Scholars, journalists and academics are gunned down by BJP affiliated gangs. Human rights activists are thrown in jail for sedition and left to die. Farmers are run over and murdered by government officials for protesting the corporate takeover of India's food chain. Corporates and politicians have a two-sided approach to the population. They first cause mass dispossession and impoverishment through state terror and violence taking land. 
they then round up their victims, pretending to be their saviors, either sending them into crowded, polluted cities to earn poverty wages and become consumers in order to maximize shareholder value, or get them into the military or RSS, where they start a process of indoctrination into fascistic Hindutva ideology at RSS boarding schools and camps providing basic substance and training. The aim is to ensure there is the next generation of RSS foot soldiers and an army of people who are able to terrorize villages during election time to guarantee a vote for the BJP to keep the myth of liberal democracy alive. We are at the stage of capitalism where it needs fascist authoritarianism for its next cycle of capital accumulation. Government forces and private sector militia will continue firing until every inch of earth is privatized, dug up and exploited for profit until nothing is held in common ownership and we are all subservient to capitalism. I want to end by encouraging us here in the UK to think about fighting for revolutionary grassroots reparations with surgical precision to enable people to recover from colonialism, stopping imperialism and dismantling capitalism, to recover from the genocides, famines and loss of cultures and the theft of land and resources that are now under private ownership. We need to target the financial system, laws, institutions and apparatus that give capitalism its powers and build something social, collective and custodial in its place. Thank you, everyone. Thank you, Thank you very much to all our panelists. And we those questions to be directed to our speakers. Ki dunya me jo adivasi shangharsh hai, to us dunya ke log isko isme jurne ke liye kya kar sakte hai? ये आज के लिए बहुत महत्वपूर्ण सवाल हमने किया था और जिसको आप लोग भी मतलब इसको फिर से सवाल कर रहे हैं एक तो आज आज के कार्यक्रम में कि ग्लोबल या फिर डिजिटल इंडिया वी हैव अ ग्लोबल एंड डिजिटल वर्ल्ड एट द मोमेंट वी नीड टू गेट द एडिवासी पीपल इन्वॉल्व्ड इन दिस इनटू द डिजिटल वर्ल्ड we need to be able to use social media and work with the digital world however many movements are happening in the world nationally and internationally connect we can see multinational companies and those that are trying to loot lands and people how many people we have or how many people we can trust in we need to make the people's movement more stronger we need media support wherever we are we need the entire of india the entirety of india we need a global we need a platform we need to take this to a platform where we can be supported and be united so that we can as one take this forward and this is of utmost importance shukriya dai mani ji bahut bahut shukriya um philip kujo ji aap hain acha koi baat nahi ananya can we take the next question 
हेलो ओ फिलिप जी क्या मैं जोड़ सकता हूँ जी जी मैं आई जॉइन द चैट एक तो है कि दुनिया दुनिया में जहाँ भी आदिवासी लोग है are paying attention to the environment and it's such a big thing but they're not always getting all the information they worry about their water the land their property their water and their homes but whatever information or policies that they can intervene in whatever is happening grassroots you need to know what the strategies are at the grassroots level as sony g mentioned that they are totally terrorized in their areas and how they are frightening scaring the adivasi people and what is happening on the ground and this information go right to the top and where the policy holders and makers are whatever yeah whatever information they get should come from the grassroots and that is a special relationship and we need um support to build that relationship so the voices are heard up above the next question ready okay on the chat i think i see a question for priya the question is could you explain how green technologies like solar power is being implemented and how does it affect adivasi communities thank you priya yeah uh, so uh, so much has been said and touted about the green technology especially solar and wind as as the solution and large scale solar and wind as a solution but one needs to really understand that in in india at least from the whole perspective of india there is a very uh, there's a lack of a regulatory framework current so everything that is green you know which is solar and wind is it, it gets single window clearances everything is welcome whereas we don't look at the socio ecological impacts of these large scale green technologies basically uh solar for example is an in, it's a, it's a land intensive thing so if you want to set up a solar plant it re, it, it requires that you have huge tracts of land taken away from communities from adivasis from dalits to set up the solar plant in itself so if you look at uh, a solar plant in karnataka which has 13000 acres of land has been taken on lease from communities you know and that was farm land so uh, like uh, for solar what happens is like uh, even to like for, for to produce energy per megawatt you require 2 to 2.5 hectares of land so it's that kind of a land intensive business and you have these big large scale groups like adani coming in and engaging in land grab uh, i i showed you a slide in which uh, you know in in tirum in in, in tirumani basically you saw how in tamil nadu Uh, adani has has really gone out and grab land uh, uh, basically what adani has done is basically it 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 pulled people to sign on on documents people thought they were you know basically leasing out their land for 10000 rupees but what was actually happening was basically people who were who couldn't read and write communities they were basically signing on to a um, power of attorney adani basically or agents of adani uh solar power basically used these power of attorneys to transfer land in the name of a bogus company in surat this is just one example huh? and then after three transfers what has happened is that the land is finally transferred in the name of adani power limited hmm? in kamudi so this kind of large scale land grab grab is happening in the name of solar we have seen people and communities coming out and protesting against this 
but what is happening is, you know, when when people protest, say, for example, solar land grab, everybody goes against them, says that, oh, you are against fossil fuel. Now you're also against, you know, green energy. Huh? But that's not the thing. That, this, that, that's the reason why we need to put social justice land rights at the center of this transition. It's not just about transitioning from fossil fuel to renewables, but how does it this transition happen? If Adani is going to uh, set up a solar plant the same way as it, it operated and set up a mine in Jharkhand, then there is a problem. And, and this problem arises because of the system in which, the capitalist system in which, profit-oriented system in which everything is operating. You ask specifically about Adivasi's rights in Bhima Shankar in mm, Maharashtra, we have seen Suzlon setting up windmills in the forest. What happened is that, uh, you know, the Adivasi communities who resides on the outskirts of that forest and depend on that, for, and that, on that forest for their livelihoods, they were not consulted. They, uh, they, and, uh, and this whole Suzlon basically set up windmills there. After setting up windmills, they built roads there and they also built a boundary wall, which prevented communities from going into the forest and, you know, collecting firewood, uh, you know, collecting non-timber forest produce. So, and if you look, when we went into those villages, and we started talking to the community, we realized that the Forest Rights Act was not implemented at all in that region. So there are these violations, as particularly in wind, you will find that Forest Rights Act is violated, communities' rights over forest, because wind mills usually come on hillocks and, you know, uh, forest lands. Priya, uh, I'm sorry, uh, we're running out of time. If you can yeah. just have your last words in here. Yeah. There is land grab mostly that's been seen. Thank you so much. I'm so sorry for cutting you short. We've run out of time practically, but the conversation still continues and there are many platforms on which this is actually going to continue and it's all there in the chat. I'm going to call on Ananya to just wrap up the session. Thank you very much. Hi. Yeah, no, thanks Ruby. And thanks so much to all our speakers. You've all been absolutely fantastic. I know this has been a very hectic and very rushed session. Um, but rest assured that this conversation can continue. Um, I know we have a lot of questions on the chat about a lot of issues about um, how we can take this further, um, the role of NGOs and such like that. And um, I've posted the links to the SASG's um, South Asia Solidarity Group's uh, social media. If you want to continue conversations with us there, um, there's also um, the People's Summit uh, Slack for the, uh, the COP26 Coalition Slack for the general um, discussion as well. Um, so I want to say a massive thank you to everyone and we'll keep on um, fighting uh, these struggles in solidarity. So thank you so much. Bye.